Hey guys, saying it's alive. We're up here at my house in coastal Connecticut and we're going to be making beef bone broth. Say that five times. Bone broth, bone broth, bone broth, bone broth. <laughs> Here's our bones. I'm Brad. Let's make some broth. <laughs> the big difference between bone broth and just a stock which we made an episode before, you know, about like a master stock, a type of a multi-species stock that I like. It's got big aromatics. It's got, you know, celery, the classic mirepoix. Soup party, my kind of party, babe. And for me, bone broth is more simple. It's just the bones and some water. I tend to add half of a lemon and maybe a couple little aromatics uh, and, and a little bit of garlic, but nothing like I would with a, with a stock. All these bones, you know, uh, if you were to cut it open on a bandsaw, they'd be hollow. It's the traditional marrow bone filled with basically a type of fat in there. If you can get like shanky knuckles or joiny parts of beef, by all means. The more connective tissue, the more, uh, uh, the more jointy, the better when it comes to making a big stock or a broth. So yeah, we're just gonna blanch these off. Uh, Boiling hot water for, you know, just a few minutes. And again, that's just going to draw off some of the impurities and get this party started. I'm waiting for a big giant stock pot that's got a little bit of water in there to come to a boil. I'm still stuck cooking with electric over here, uh, but, but I'm going to get that converted soon. A good old propane. This is never going to boil. Oh, good God. I can't do this anymore. Who would have known? Oh. All right, here we go. Bones going in the blanching water. Blanching, well, it, it draws out some of the impurities off of the meat and off the bone, brings out some nasty little scum. This is bypassing a whole sk skimming the scum. As our buddy Matty likes to say, scam the scam! Oh, back to the bones. Duh, Brad. Hello, Brad. When you put things in hot water, you like have to make a face, right? It's like. <laughs> All right, beautiful, perfect. Now, we're gonna let that descuzzify for about five, six, seven minutes. And then I'm gonna pull them off and we're gonna roast them. I got my oven going at 500. We're gonna put them right on the roasting racks. A little olive oil, just to help the caramelization. Let that come back up to a boil, and then we'll start pulling bones out in a minute or two. You got a minute, Kev. Oh my God, we're back to this. That's a good point for proper distraction. We're gonna add these, just because they caught my eye, and, um, and I forgot about them. And you know what? I know I said, oh, we're gonna keep it real, just bone broth. But I got some dried mushrooms I forgot about, an old chunk of chicken of the wood. <laughs> and then we got a little piece of lion's mane, <gasps> a little chunk of hen of the wood, it looks like. And then a couple little chunks of uh, shiitake stems. We'll add those right into the party. Why not? You know, at this point, <laughs> I don't even care. We're just getting crazy now. A little sprig of thyme. And a little pink peppercorn. And a chili de arbol and a cinnamon stick. All right, I like where we're going with this. I like these kind of warmnesses. These warmnesses in my stock. It's not stock, it's bone broth. I like to throw a little allspice in. Just a little, all right? We're not going nuts here. Just a little bit. I'm talking just a couple. Pop, pop, pop. I'm picking up what I'm putting. Ow! Down. So turn the water off. I, with the ladle, took off some scum already. This is a second layer of scum. And now we're gonna pull the bones. I give it a little drizzle of the olive oil. It's got plenty of its own fat on it, but some of those little meaty bits I like to get a little, help get a little brown on them. And then at that point, I also hit the onions with it too. Onions, a little ginger, let that get a little roasty on there. A little bit of garlic. Uh-oh. And we'll put that right in the oven. I got it going, sorry. I got it going at 550. I'm sorry, I got it going at 500 degrees. And this is going to take, you know, a good 30, 40, 50 minutes to get a real nice solid thing on them. In about 20 minutes, I'll come and put the top, you know, and, and, and switch them top to bottom. Give them a little spin, keep an eye on them. You don't want to burn them, but you want to pick up a nice roast on them. So bones are done, all right? Roast it up. It's been about 30 minutes, 30 minutes, I'd say. 
All right, getting roasty. Some of that fat starting to render off. You can see all the, all the meat got nice and caramelized. That's gonna add color, but most importantly, it's gonna add flavor. Add those bad babies right to the thing. There's nothing in the stock pot right now. And then look, a little bit of that roasted ginger and a little bit of that roasted garlic. Just throw it in there. You don't wanna go pouring fat down the drain, okay? You don't, don't do it. Oh, you're gonna clog up the systems, ruin my septic tank, that cost me $50,000. <laughs> no, but really, don't put fat down the drain. As soon as it gets cool, it just turns into a bar of soap. It just, you know, it, it gets hard again. And uh, no bueno. No bueno for the septic or even the city systems, okay? Bad for the sewers. But if you collect it and strain it, you can cook with it, and it's delightful. All right, pop, pop, pop. So we got our bones in here. Time for the wild cards, okay? I got two little sticks of North Atlantic sugar kelp. Um, some may call it kombu. Dried chicken of the woods. One stalk of lemongrass. Oh God, it just goes so well with beef. It goes great with everything. It's one of my favorite smells in the world. A little warm spices, remember? Our little peppers are all spice. Our star anise, our cinnamon stick. Right in there, okay? A little bit of lion's mane just for funs, all right? A little bit of thyme, some bay leaves right in there. Some of our other mixed mushrooms, boom, right in there, all right? Just some flavor agents. Now we're gonna top it off with a little cold water. Just enough to cover all the bones with about an inch or so. Uh, this is a big pot, but again, we're gonna cook it for a lot of time and we're gonna let it evaporate and, and, and simmer down, pulling all those nutrients out, um, pulling you know minerals out into the liquid and just left this really flavorful, medicinal bone broth. You know what I do too is I add half of a lemon juice and I've been told that that acid can draw some of those minerals out of the bones. So yeah, one lemon juice, controversial, okay? But I even throw the this. Look, look, I'm gonna add that right in there, all right? You don't like it? Call your mom. Tell her about it. She be like, you won't follow that man. He's a bad man. All right, let's throw this on the stove top. No, oh, God! Like I said, we're gonna bring that up, put it on high, bring it up to almost a boil, turn the heat down, let it simmer, and then from there, it's just keep an eye on it. You skim your scum, you ladle off your fat. Been simmering here, we got a nice, we brought it up to a nice, you know, to a boil. All right, now I'm gonna turn it down. 30 minutes in, that's the color we're looking at. Little, little murky, little grayish, little goldenish in a sense, like a really bad chicken stock, but we'll get there. That's where we're at now. And like I said, this is a low and slow long game. So I was up at, I was up at number high, <laughs> number nine on my range. We're going to kick it down to like a three and a half. Keep an eye on it. Overnight, put a lid on it with just a little crack. You leave it too high, you think you're, real, you're in good shape. You wake up in the morning and there's you know, this much left and you got a demi-gloss if you're lucky. You want little bloop overnights. And then during the daytime when you have a little more awareness, you know, you can kick it up a little bit and have a little bit more of an aggressive evaporation. So we'll see you in a little bit. Out of my house. All right, so our bone broth's been going overnight. Uh, a nice little, a good simmer, good little bubble. It, uh, reduced by, I'd say, you know, a solid half. And throughout the day yesterday and then this morning and late last night, I uh, just kept skimming the fat off and skimming the fat off and I strained it. And let me show you what I got. You, you stay right here. You know, when you skim, you get a little bit of broth in there too, right? But the rest is all just uh, this beautiful beef uh, uh, marrow fat. And it almost looks like butter. I'm just going to pour, I chill it after I skim it. And then the liquid separates from the, from the fat the same way like, but, you know, making butter, you know, like the buttermilk separates from the, uh, uh, from the, from the milk fat. And now we're just left with this beautiful, already filtered, clean uh, uh, beef marrow fat that I'm gonna put into a saucepan on low heat and just let it, let it cook down a little bit. And by cook down, I mean any residual moisture in there is gonna evaporate. And uh, it's just gonna be left with a solid, clean, uh, beautiful cooking fat. And we'll just put this on a little low heat and I'll let, that, I'll let that do what I was talking about. This is from a different batch that I did. You can tell it's actually got a little bit of a different hue um, of color to it. But look, I mean, it's just pure, solid fat. Beef marrow fat. It's fat, the same thing you would use like uh, olive oil or, or anything else, you know. I give them a little drainy drain. Right into this here. Oh, right in my eye! So there's always one left, you know? No, I think we got it all. Whew, thank God that's over. Back to our stock. 
Now for the tricky part. A little bit of straining, okay? A lot of bit of straining, actually. I mean, look at this Joe homeowner operation I got going on. Uh, it's like, a, you know, I need a giant one of these. All right, Brad, just buy one already. And, uh, and this is when I catch the bigger solids and the finer stuff. It works. Been doing it for decades. <laughs> All right. Let's see how this goes, bud. Oh, uh, nice and easy, Brad. Nice. We'll have to do this twice because my system doesn't catch everything. All right, I got my little little tasting spoon. These things are the best. You don't want to go fooling around with the bone broth sludge. Some people eat it. I'm sure the ducks would eat it. <laughs> eat up, don't make a mess. Whack. It's just bone marrow fat that hasn't completely rendered out. Next time on It's Alive, we're gonna eat the fat off the, we're gonna eat the sludge fat, the marrow sludge. <laughs> All right, Brad, they're gonna fire you. Whoop, whoop, easy, Leone. There we go, Papa. Oh. All right, so we're gonna do our final strain here through the uh, fine mesh strainer and uh, just to get any solids out of there. Oh, heavens. Still a little bit fat on there, but that's okay. Just beautiful. Let's do a color analysis. Get those warm notes, add all, all the, you, you can kind of really pick through everything that you put in, but you put in there, you know, because nothing's super overpowering, but it's warm, it's toasty. It kind of reminds me of like a, like a good pho broth or something like that, or just as far as well, just in aromatics at least, you know? Those warm kind of notes in it, but uh, it smells great. Big beefiness, but clean, you know? It doesn't have any funk to it. It's warm, but I, I like it hot. So I'm just gonna put it on, put a little, give it a little, give it a little gentle, a gentle warm up. Watch yourself, daddy. My favorite part of every cooking show. <laughs> no, it's not that bad. So what I have here is just our, our tried and true classic. It's um, chili honey, hot fermented chili honey, hot honey. I'm gonna put a little, just a, I mean, that's it. I mean, this stuff's got a little kick to it, all right? Let me try it by itself. Whoa. Floral from the habaneros, it's sweet. Oh my God, it's so good. And for our second wild card here, this little cute number. All right, I put this together about a week ago. It's equal parts ginger, garlic, and fresh turmeric, all microplaned with about one and a half percent salt uh, and a little bit of kimchi juice. Oh, that's what we'll do next. All right, episode coming soon. And it's live. We're gonna do turmeric, garlic, ginger paste for enhancing your bone broths. I'm gonna put a little, little scooper of that in there. And then look, look, and then just a little. Just a little bit. All right, let's give it a shot. Yeah, buddy. Oh, it's good. Oh, the salt just really kind of, I mean, like any type of, uh, in, with anything, right? It really just kind of pops out those flavors, rounds it all out, and uh, just makes it a really, really enjoyable beverage. So yeah, let me just taste it plain by itself again too. I mean, this is no salt. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's clean. I don't know how to say this without it like not sounding unappetizing, but it's like, it's, it's bony, you know? It's like, it's, it's, you get, it's minerally. It's, um, you know, and, and the beef, most of the flavor you get, that big beefy flavor is when you, you, you put more meat in it, you know? It's great as a snack, it's great as a cup, it's great as a little, a little hot drink, a little coffee substitute. But then it's also, you know, before you add all that jazz to it, it's a great cooking thing. You know, add it to a braise, you're gonna make ramen, you're gonna make soup, you're gonna make anything. You are a hero for dinner. Look at those damn ducks. They're starting to aggravate me. I might have to sell them or smoke them. See you next time on It's Alive, Smoke Duck. <laughs> I'm just kidding, they're kind of our pets now. All right. Mm. Sometimes you hear them, like 20 of them go, that's my coyote pack call. <laughs>